Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Pokor, your host, but you already know that if you watch my show. Appreciate you taking the time to come out and watch one of my episodes. As you can see, I've got another car review, or in this case, an SUV review, of the all-new Jeep Wrangler 4xe. Actually, this is the Rubicon version of that, and it's 4xe, but they say 4xe. So I'm going to get in a little bit more into that. So again, thanks very much for joining me. Let me tell you a little bit about this plug-in version hybrid. Now, built on 80 years of legendary heritage, Jeep is an authentic SUV with capability, craftsmanship, and versatility for people who seek extraordinary journeys. And a Wrangler is used, sure, for daily driving to and from work in any geography and climate during the week. Then you can take it out and climb serious trails, negotiate muddy roads, or dash along sandy dunes over the weekend. So this new Wrangler, like every other Wrangler before it, is built to meet these considerable customer demands and facilitate those journeys. Oh, but it's also built to slash their fuel bills as well. So introducing the Jeep Wrangler a 4XE, or it's pronounced 4xE, a new vehicle that is designed to provide new levels of efficiency, environmental responsibility, performance, and capability on and off the road. Now, according to Jeep's brand chief, it is the greenest, most efficient, and capable Wrangler Jeep has ever created. And it's first and foremost a Wrangler with trail-rated running gear. Now, Wrangler's heritage is defined by its legendary off-road capability. And the 4xe provides seamless integration of electric power into the 4x4 powertrain. Now, the design is all Jeep, and it comes in two trims, the Sahara and the Rubicon, both featuring that familiar stout boxy body, soft or hard roof configurations. This has 118.4 or 3,008 millimeter wheelbase, that was inches the other number, steel bumpers, ground clearance of only 10 inches, ooh, integrated roll bar, beefy front and rear tow hooks, body colored hard top, and a handful of skid plates, and much, much more. And his standard is LED lighting all around. Seating inside is good for five people, and cargo space is quite capable. With 784 liters, or 227 cubic feet, behind the second row. And you fold that up, and it now provides a total of 1,908 liters, or 67.4 cubic feet of space. Now sticking and staying with looking at the interior, it is all familiar to Jeep customers, I'm sure, with grab bars, utilitarian accents, and simple instrumentation. There's lots of buttons to help find features to use, and the main infotainment system screen is 8.4 inches and supports a Jeep Connect 4C nav with built-in navigation, as well as Apple's CarPlay and, of course, Google Auto. Then to rock out, because you can in this thing, literally, a nine-speaker Alpine auto system with subwoofer and a 552-watt 12-channel amplifier are provided. An HVAC system that is easy to use and works well. And it also includes heated side mirrors. And to save on some energy, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, and a remote start system can be purchased as part of the cold weather group option. So my review vehicle is the Rubicon trim level, as you can see. And it comes with these massive 17-inch wheels. Well, the wheels aren't so massive, but the tires certainly are. They're wrapped in knobby 33-inch tires. 10.8 inches of ground clearance. Tell you folks, I need a stepladder to get up into this thing. But I'm getting my exercise going up and down anyway. Now the reason, folks, I'm reviewing this car is that it is a plug-in hybrid vehicle. And Jeep's... And more importantly, I think that this is Jeep's first foray into the electrified marketplace with this vehicle. So I'm not expecting too much on an EV, but I think it was worthy of a review. Now the powertrain integrates two electric motors and it has a 400 volt battery pack with also a fuel efficient turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine and torque flight eight speed automatic transmission. Now the battery pack is 17 kilowatt hours in size. I'd like it something bigger, but it's not bad. And it's comprised of 96 cells with lithium, lithium ion, nickel, uh, manganese, and cobalt materials. 
Now power output with all these pieces provides 375 horsepower or about 280 kilowatts of power and 470 pound-feet 637 newton meters of torque. So as I mentioned there are electric motors in the 4 by e and there are two of them. The liquid cooled e-torque motor which is rated at 33 kilowatts, is mounted at the front of the engine. This motor generator spins the engine for nearly seamless fuel-saving start-stop operations and generates electricity as well for the battery pack. And the second motor is rated at 100 kilowatts, and it's mounted on the front of the transmission case and is key for pure electric operation of the vehicle. Now charging for the battery pack is uh, pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot going on here. When it comes to charging, it's only available in an AC level 1-2 charger capable of up to 2.5 kilowatts. So with the standard level 2 home charger or public charger that you'll find anywhere, um, it will charge from a 0 to 100% in about 2.5 hours. Now for range, the 4xE gets an EPA rated range of 35 kilometers or about 25 miles in all electric driving. And you can add another 500 kilometers or so and 300 miles or so of available range with gasoline through the, the engine only. The Canada Guide rates the electricity and gasoline combined fuel economy at 4.8 LE per 100 kilometers, which equates to about 55 MPGE. This is all with a vehicle that has a curb weight of just over 5,200 pounds, so it's pretty heavy. Now, of course, you can tow with the Wrangler 4xE as it supports up to 3,500 pounds of trailer weight with the installed Class 2 hitch and a 2-inch receiver. And for safety, in addition to this thick frame and body, Jeep does offer electronic stability and traction control, hill start assist, and a rear backup camera and standard driving aids include just regular cruise control. Now my tester has the optional safety group and advanced safety groups installed. Those are two different options. And they include a bunch of stuff like park sensor rear park assist system, blind spot monitoring, which works really well by the way, it makes a loud beep when you're uh, somebody's in your spot, you're trying to change a lane. Rear cross path detection, automatic high beams, advanced brake assist, forward collision warning with brake assist and adaptive contru cruise control, excuse me, with a stop feature. One option on this vehicle is the Sky One Touch Power Top. At the push of a button, it lets you open and close it to any point you wish. And you could stow it in a handy case in the back. Now Jeep provides a toolkit for removal of the rest of the hard top components to allow for a truly open air experience. All right, so now that you have a good overview of this beast, let's go for a quick drive. All right, so give it my quick driving impressions. Not a whole lot I'm gonna talk about on this vehicle with regards to an EV standpoint or perspective or the mindset. And as you folks know, that's how I go into these car reviews because um, I'm not trying to review the car overall for all its characteristics as a normal car, a normal ICE vehicle. But I'm trying to relate it down to the EV experience and how that experience will affect, you know, range, battery, convenience, drivability, uh, costing, all that kind of stuff. So I've only had a couple of days with these, this car. It's, uh, it's a very busy month here in Ontario with Eco Month starting and all kinds of journals of booking vehicles. So we're only getting two or three days at a time pop to do these. And with my regular job, it's hard to squeeze it in. So that's why I'm huffing and puffing because I'm trying to get through this, all this filming pretty quick as I have to return this car very shortly. But in a nutshell, um, this is a Jeep. So I'm not, you know, I'm not used to Jeeps. Um, they're not, they're not a vehicle for me um, personally as an everyday vehicle, but I could see the allure, obviously going back country, camping, four by fouring, towing stuff, works, you know, work, even potential work stuff. I mean, I see it. But as this relates to an EV, as I mentioned, it's got a fairly small battery range. Now, um, I'll put my chart up here to show you what the range is that I've been getting over the last couple of days. Again, I don't have a lot to metric this on, so I'm hoping some other owners will pipe up. But as you can see, you know, I'm getting about 30 kilometers of range. Uh, yesterday was a weird day where we had wet snow. The temperature dropped to 2 degrees Celsius, went up to 8 Today it's um, in the 16 degree range, if I'm not mistaken, right now. So it's pretty comfortable. Um, you know, ideally it's 20 degrees for batteries. 
So it's much more uh, pleasant for the battery pack. And, you know, I've been running it now in, um, in EV only mode. Um, and again, you can see the chart to see what the numbers that I've got for the couple days that I have it. So it seems to be holding its average stated range of around that 35 to 40 kilometers uh, in, in good weather, right? In good weather. Um, so, you know, that's that's okay. Now, if that fits in your daily life si uh, driving cycle, then great. If not, then this may not be the one for you. Now, as far as drivability, again, it's a Jeep, it's high. You really gotta climb up to get into this thing. It feels like you can run over a truck if you want to in this thing. It's got a really high visibility. You know, it, it drives okay. I mean, it's not, as I mentioned, a car soft drive, but it drives okay. It's a Jeep, so if you're familiar with Jeeps, then that's the way it's gonna drive, and this has the bigger tires. So they're noisier, as I mentioned, and I'm getting up to speed here, uh, to road speed, and as you can hear, the uh, increase in noise already, mainly because of this fabric roof. So if, you, if this was a solid hardtop option only, the noise would probably be a bit better, but, but still um, quite noisy. Now, as an EV, there is a switch, a manual switch here to put in maximum regen. Uh, as they say and it will almost take you to a stop it won't hold you there's no hold feature um, but and you depending on how fast you're going you know it slows you down but I would say it's like a, a level two setting out of four for regen so it's kind of in the middle um, you know uh, see now I've just let off a little bit going back now I've put on the accelerator now I've let off so you can kind of see it's not super dramatic as far as speeds go, I know there's a lot of torque in, uh, th that are the numbers that are here. And if I were to, this is, I'm in two wheel high, by the way, uh, from a driving mode. If I were to punch it, let, the engine's going to kick in because that's what's going to provide the maximum acceleration. So let me just stop here or slow down because there's nobody behind me and I'm in a fairly quiet, my usual backcountry roads here that I go to. I'm in electric only mode right now and I'm going to punch it. you heard stuff fly of course I had some change in stuff here but you heard the engine kick in so to get the maximum torque it's a combination of the electric motors and the gasoline engine um, if you just try to use the gasoline the electric motors to a certain point they'll go but then if you really want more power the engine has to kick in that's the way it seems that Jeep has designed this even though I have it in electric only mode and what electric only mode will do is it will use the battery until it depletes enough where the engine will start kicking in, leave a little bit of battery for stop and go traffic and all that kind of stuff. So if it fits your lifestyle, it's good. Um, it'll, I, again, this isn't something I wouldn't get personally because I have no need for it. Um, it's, going to, it's going to use a lot more fuel than I normally would because my driving distance is at least 50 kilometers a day is a minimum, if not more. Uh, unusual probably about 60 kilometers on average before I that's just to go back and forth to work before I even have to go any road, road trips so that's that's my experience so for me I'd be spending more time driving uh, I'd be using gas pretty well every day and that's kind of what I'm trying to do to defeat the point so when I mentioned earlier and probably a bit later about that I really wish this had a bigger battery that's the reason why I wish it you know it, it could give you 60 50 60 kilometers something like that just to spread that out a little bit more to cover a wider use case. But I can see where this works. And I, I will talk a little bit more about that in the pros and cons section coming up. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the drive along. So let me talk quickly about pricing for the uh, Jeep Wranglers. Um, as I mentioned, the Wrangler 4 does come in two trim levels. 
There's the Sahara, which starts at a Canadian MSRP of $54,995. And the Rubicon, which has an MSRP of $59,995. These are all, again, Canadian numbers. Now, my tester came with many options, and it MSRP'd out at $74,000. $585. Now let me talk about some of the pros and cons on this. And uh, you know, the pros, the way I peel this, uh, the layers back on this one, Jeep is an iconic brand. Been around for over 80 years, as I mentioned, for almost 80 years. And I'm really happy as a pro that um, this brand and vehicle has entered the electrification landscape. I'm really glad that Jeep has done that. You know, we're seeing OEMs take risks with their iconic brands. I talked about Ford before and others, and Jeep is doing the same thing. And it is Jeep's greenest SUV, and the Wrangler 4 by e helps with their goal of delivering an efficient, eco-friendly, and fun-to-drive roading experience. Now, an all-electric range can be enough for many in most daily use cases. It's kind of on that bubble almost from a range perspective. And there is seamless switching between the power modes. What I mean by that is once the battery drains, the engine kicks in and it seamlessly goes back and forth from using the battery a bit in start and stops to running it and so forth until you recharge the battery again. And for off-roading enthusiasts, the on-demand electric torque coupled with the Jeep's gearing and their axles can make for a very quiet experience with no noise from the engine. So you're going through your trails with no engine running it can be pretty cool. Now, for a vehicle of this type and class, it does have good fuel economy numbers. And it's a Jeep. So, if you are a Jeep user and lover already, the 4xe will live up to all that Jeep delivers and much, much more. Now, if I look at some of the cons, it is a plug-in electric hybrid. And it still has two systems to maintain, right? Your internal combustion system and all the powertrain associated with that. And then your battery system with everything associated with that. The battery pack, in my opinion, is still somewhat small. And I would have liked to see something larger, maybe over 20 kilowatt hours, 22 or something like that, with well over 50 kilometers or more range. I'd like to see 60 or 70 kilometers if I can. And as you listened a little bit during the driving time, it is noisy. I mean, now mind you, it does have the flexible roof or the, uh, the uh, material roof for three quarters of it. So like a convertible, it's gonna allow for much more outside noise to come in and wind noise as well. And it's not that comfortable when you're on bumpy roads, um, but it is a Jeep. And the costs. Now, I will admit, I'm not familiar with standard Jeep pricing and what it's been like in the past. It's, it's something that I've never been interested in that particular brand or the enthusiasm around Jeeps, but I understand it. Um, and to me, the electric range version here is a lot of money to spend. You know, this is $75,000 for, if you look at it from an electrification standpoint, only giving you 35 to 40 kilometers, maybe 45 on a good day of range. Um, however, Again, it is a Jeep, and it is a very unique vehicle that many current Jeep owners, uh, I believe that this would be a great way for them to get into some electrification today. We'll have to see really how it sells. So let me just summarize the review with this. Um, I am really glad that Jeep has come out with this first step in their electrification journey. But, you know, I'll be really more excited when that Magneto concept becomes a reality that BEV offering providing everything Jeep customers want, but in a truly all electric package, I think will change the game for Jeep. So do I give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Well, it's actually a little bit of both because you have to look at it from a different perspective. It's a thumbs up because I'm glad Jeep at least has something to offer within their lineup that will help lower greenhouse gas emissions. And in the right use case, if you're driving day to day, you know, under the electric range, you can save a lot of money on fuel, but also on emissions in all electric mode. But it's got a high price. And for minimal range, I'm not sure if it's worth it in the long run. So it really is something that a potential Jeep buyer needs to look at if they're, if they're thinking about electrification and trying to lower their, their uh, greenhouse gas emissions and if this fits into their daily use case. And it also does help keep these people loyal to the brand 
and hopefully open their eyes to electrification where they may not have seen it. So it's a thumbs up for some perspective of Jeep owners and people wanting to get or needing a vehicle like this for be it towing or off-roading or whatever their lifestyle demands. But if you look at the price point and the range associated with it, I do give it a thumbs down because it's not that much range for a pretty high price. Would I get one personally? Somebody's going to ask me. Uh, no, because I have no need for something like this in my lifestyle. And if I would, I'd probably get an SUV versus something like this. But I do see the allure. I've rented some of these in the past and uh, in, in vacation destinations and booted around. They're a lot of fun to drive. So I would not get one personally. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, my review of the Jeep Wrangler 4xe. Thanks very much for watching. For those that follow me on YouTube, I appreciate it a lot. If you're subscribing, thank you. If, you've, if you're not subscribing, please consider. Would uh, very much welcome that. And as always, always uh, would love to hear viewer comments. If you own one of these, let me know. They've only been out for about six months or so, so I'd love to hear your comments on what you think so far, what kind of range you're getting. Now also, um, I'm always very humbled by my Patreon supporters. You know who you are, so please um, take that as my thanks always each and every show. If you're interested in helping me out through Patreon, you can see the link below. Watch that EV landscape. Boy, all kinds of stuff coming. I've got another couple of car reviews this month, as I mentioned on the last show. Things are opening up, so it's an exciting time to be following, as always, the electric landscape. And until the next time, again, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care, and bye-bye.